This is part 17 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to enable HTTPS for ASP.NET Web API service. After HTTPS is enabled, if a request is issued using HTTP, it will be automatically redirected using HTTPS. Let's look at this in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio now. The first thing that we want to do is add a class file to our Web API project. So let's right click on this employee service project, add, and we want to add a class file. Let's name this file require HTTPS attribute. This class is going to inherit from authorization filter attribute class. This class is present in a different namespace which is system.web.http.filters. Let's bring this namespace in. The first thing that we are going to do here is override a method that is present in this class. So let's type the keyword override and then when we press space we can see all the methods that we can override. So we want to override this method on authorization Notice this method has got a parameter, action context. This parameter provides us with access to both the request and the response object. So the first thing that we are going to check here is if action context dot request dot request URI. So the scheme of the request URI, if it is not equal to URI scheme HTTPS. So this basically means if the request is not issued using HTTPS, then we are going to write code which is going to automatically redirect that request using HTTPS. Else, so if the request is issued using HTTPS, then we don't want to do anything special. We simply want to execute the base class on authorization method. So if the request is not issued using HTTPS, then we are going to use the action context object again, dot response equals, we are going to use the action context object dot request dot, we are going to use create response method. This method is present in a different namespace which is system.net.http. So let's bring that namespace. So basically, if a request is issued to this resource using HTTP protocol, then we want to send back, okay, we have found the request, but then whoever has issued the request, we have to use HTTPS instead of HTTP. So, action context dot response dot content is equal to new string content and we are going to simply include the string use HTTPS instead of HTTP. So what are these two lines telling? These two lines are telling, okay, we have found the URI that you're looking for, but you will have to use HTTPS instead of HTTP. And then what we are going to do is we are going to automatically redirect the request using HTTPS. And for that, we are going to use URI builder class. Let's call the instance also URI builder equals new URI builder. And we are going to build the URI from the request object, from the original request object. So let's use the action context dot request dot request URI. So everything that we have in the original request, we, we need that. We are going to create a new URL using all that information. Now what we want to change is the protocol. So instead of using HTTP, we want to use HTTPS. And obviously with HTTPS, we'll have a different port number. So we are also going to change the port number. So URI builder dot scheme 
equals URI dot URI scheme HTTPS. So we are changing the scheme to HTTPS and similarly URI builder dot port equals the port number, the HTTPS port number for our project. So let's go to the project properties window by pressing F4 and here we see the HTTPS port number which is 44352. And then finally we need to set this URI within the location header. So let's use the action context object again dot response dot headers and the header we are after is the location header that is equal to URI builder dot URI. So we have our filter here. Now we need to register this filter. So let's go to our web API config and in here let's use this config object which is coming into the function as the parameter config dot filters dot add new require HTTPS attribute right so now let's give our solution a build build succeeded now let's issue a request using HTTP protocol look at this as soon as I hit enter it automatically redirects it to HTTPS let's understand what's happening behind the scenes let's launch browser developer tools by pressing F12 key and let's click on this network tab now let's issue the request once again so let's try to issue a request using HTTP protocol as soon as we hit enter we are redirected to HTTPS and look at this here we've got two requests now look at the first request with that we got 302 status code and there is another request to the same URI and we get 200 look at this if we inspect this so we first issued a request using HTTP protocol and look at what we have got back we have got back 302 found status code so basically we found it and then within the response that we have got back we have also this location header so this is basically telling this is where the actual URI is so we have to issue the request using HTTPS so browser found this status code 302 and within the location header we have the URI where we have the resource so the browser automatically reissued the request using this HTTPS URL so here is that request so we issued a request using HTTPS and the response that we got is 200 OK the data from the server whatever happens in the browser the same thing also happens in Fiddler notice those two requests are captured by Fiddler with the first request we got status code 302 and with the second status code 200 let's inspect the first request if we look at the raw request notice a request is issued using HTTP protocol and if we look at the raw response we got status code 302 found and the location header is set to HTTPS and look at the message use HTTPS instead of HTTP here we are missing the closing P tag that's basically because we're missing the closing P tag right here so Fiddler has seen the status code 302 and it also has seen the location header so it automatically reissued the request using HTTPS since the request is issued using HTTPS we can't see the request and response that we got to be able to see the request and response we will have to enable decryption notice the message right here HTTPS decryption is disabled click to configure so we can either click on this message right here to enable decryption or we can click on tools telerik fiddler options and then click on HTTPS tab check this checkbox decrypt HTTPS traffic let's also ignore server certificate errors click OK now let's close Google Chrome browser window browser relaunched now notice within Fiddler we've got a lot of traffic logged let's go ahead and delete all these requests 
Now let's issue a request using HTTP protocol. Notice it is redirected to HTTPS. And now if we look at Fedla, these are the last three requests that are issued. So this is the one which is issued using HTTP. Notice we got status code 302, location header, and it automatically redirected to HTTPS. Notice we can't see the encrypted data here, both within the request and response. So what Fiddler has done here is reissued the request using its own certificate. And here is that request. Again, with that request, we got status code 200. Notice here we can see the URL to which we have issued the request. And now we are able to see the data that we got from the server. At the moment, if you look at the constructor of the string content class that we are using, we are using the overloaded version which takes only one parameter. But there is another overloaded version which takes three parameters. And here, we can also set the media type which sets the appropriate headers on the response. Now, if you look at the response that we have got here for the status code 302, notice within the response, the message that we have here, use HTTPS instead of HTTP, this is actually HTML because the message is present inside a paragraph element. But if you look at the content type here, it is set to text slash plain. The content type should have been text slash HTML because that's what we have here. And to set the correct header, we can use this overloaded version which has got three parameters. So let's go ahead and set encoding. Encoding is present in system.text namespace. So make sure you have that using declaration. And encoding is going to be UTF-8. And the media type is going to be text slash HTML. Let's give our solution a build. Build succeeded. Now let's reissue the request using HTTP, redirect it to HTTPS. And if we look at the request, so here we have the 302 request. And if we look at the raw response, notice first of all we have the closing p tag, and the content type is also set to text slash HTML as expected. At the moment, we are using the register method of the web API config class to register this require HTTPS filter. This enables HTTPS for the entire web API application, that is, for all the controllers and action methods. Now, if you want to enable HTTPS only for specific controllers within your web API application, then don't register the filter using register method. Instead, decorate only those controllers for which you want to enable HTTPS using this require HTTPS attribute. So this enables HTTPS only for the employee's controller. All the action methods within this controller will use HTTPS. Now, if you want to enable HTTPS only for specific action methods within a controller, then decorate those action methods with this attribute require HTTPS. So this require HTTPS filter provides us with that level of flexibility. Here is the code that we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.